Okay, what's up world? Today we're going to talk about a special topic, non-inner city rappers, suburban rappers, rappers not from the streets, from that gutter gutter. You know the rappers I'm talking about. And I want to give a special shout out to the loyal viewer Matt J, who on my freestyle video, uh, one of my recent freestyle videos, I have a lot of them, he asked for this and it got a few likes and I thought it'd be a pretty interesting topic. It's not your everyday topic, like a lot of the how to rap things where I'm going to show you a little bit of how to develop your flow, how to get confidence, how to improve your voice. This is a video today, a little bit of history about suburban rappers not from the streets, a little bit of history about how you can use the knowledge you're going to learn about these rappers in order to improve your rap career or if you're one of these lovely rappers, not from the streets, not from the hood, whatever it is, non-inner city, suburban, you can still be whatever you want to be. It's like the American Navy or the American Army or whatever it is. Anyway, let's get into it. So a little bit of history about suburban rappers. Now, on one side, uh, you have to understand that a lot of rappers, just because they're marketing or just because they're rhymes or whatever they say, just because they say they're from the streets or from the hood or from the ghetto or whatever, not necessarily the case. I'm not going to name names, but you can look up a lot of the so-called gangster MCs, these street rappers who are supposedly from the ghetto and all that. Look up where they went to high school on Wikipedia or even some of their interviews, some of them admit it. You can find, you can read between the lines and notice that a lot of these guys are not from the actual ghetto, from the hood from the streets, from the projects, whatever you want to call it. I myself, not from the streets, not from the hood, from the ghetto. Now, on the other hand, this is the one sort of sidebar to all this. You can live in the city, in the inner city. And I know a lot of my viewers are from other countries. And I know in Europe, it's a little different. And other Asia, it's all different. But in the United States, especially from your, if you're from a large city, like I'm from Philly, but I live in Los Angeles or Chicago or somewhere like that. You can be from the city, be from the actual, I don't know if you'd call it inner city, but you can be from the city, but not from the ghetto, from the streets, from the projects. Totally different thing. So a lot of rappers, they're not from necessarily the projects, but they're from the city. So they're not like fake or like they, you know, if it's urban music, they're from the urban environment. That's sort of my story, like I'm from the city of Philadelphia, but I'm not from the projects or whatever. You can probably hear that by the way I talk. And so there's a little bit of up and down with all that. Now, with that being said, the history behind all this, and this is just my personal opinion and my analysis, the history behind all this really starts with Kanye West. And I'll probably make more videos about this, and this is not about whether I think Kanye is great or if he's a gay fish or if he's crazy or if he's dope as shit that's for another day but the point is it's my personal opinion and my knowledge sort of as your neighborhood rap coach hip-hop historian rap philosopher rap professor whatever you call me it's my job to kind of know these things and having lived through all of this you know i have a unique perspective before kanye west most rappers at least at the very least presented themselves as being from the inner city. Most rappers presented themselves as pimps, gangsters, hustlers, street, street folks, you know what I'm saying? Now, also, most of these rappers were actually, back before Kanye, most of these famous rappers were, compared to maybe you or me, were actually G'd up. And as I said, I'm not gonna exactly name names, but you can imagine if you look at the Rough Riders crew, the actual people behind Rockefeller, even the actual people behind Bad Boy. If you look at their life histories, like those big rap conglomerates, a lot of these cats were real street, you know, and they were actually came from nothing. Da da da. Kanye West comes in in 2004 and rap changes. So when I was a kid, I'm a little bit older than most of my, my fans and shout out to all my young fans. Any of my fans who are, are you know, 25 or above, Y'all will relate to this. When I was a kid, what a rapper was, like a rapper was an imposing, like intense figure that you usually, or at least they tried to market you this way, 
you don't want to fuck with them. Like, you know, you think of the, the big names of rap in the 90s, the Tupacs and people like that. Like, they, they, they were people that they're marketing the way that the swag, I guess you could call it, was scary. Like, uh, like, yo, I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Like, that was a rapper. DMX, like, that was a rapper. You know, even the rappers that, that were more like the smooth types, the biggies, the Jay-Zs, like, in the 90s, like, they still, like, would kill you, like, in the rhyme, you know? They'd literally be like, no, I'll, I'll shoot you, <laughs> for real. And, of course, you can think of N.W.A. and all that. Now, this is in the 90s. Obviously, we could take it all the way back to the 80s. It's all a little different. But even if you think about the message by uh, Melly Mel, Grandmaster Flash and all that, broken glass everywhere. It's the urban landscape. So when I was growing up, rap was definitely more like either people from the streets or like street philosophers, KRS-One, Nas, people like that. When Kanye West comes in, you start to see middle class, non-inner city rappers come into the, the mainstream. So, um, you know, in, in a way, I think this is a very good thing. I probably wouldn't have a job if, you know, rappers were what they were in 95, because just like a dude like me just chilling, a student, what up to UCLA, like a student couldn't necessarily pull off the rap thing before Kanye West. Uh, rappers like Drake, rappers like Tiger, rappers like, I don't know, like most of these rappers out here, the Wiz Khalifa, like, you know, before Kanye West, it wasn't as acceptable to just be like a chill dude, who, you know, sang a little bit, rapped a little bit. So Kanye West, to me, is the main split in rap for the 2000s. Um, now, that's a little bit of history. Uh, you know, you can look back at what rap major, the biggest rap albums in the 90s, and look at rap now, and you have, for better and worse, you have Kanye West to thank for that. My personal opinion, not saying it's in the encyclopedia, but, you know, if down the road I write a book or somebody else writes a book about rap history, you heard it here first from your boy Drew Morrissey, Kanye West changed all the shit. Now, um, with that being said, what does this mean for you? Now, if you're a rapper who's not from the streets or the inner city or whatever like that, that means you were born at a lucky time. Thank God. Because if you were born in 1977, well, Kanye West was born in 1977. But if you were born uh, before, uh, before like this was okay and you were like middle class, like, I'm sorry, you probably wouldn't have a rap career. I'm sorry. They're just the average rap fan, even the suburban rap fan, would just be like, you're a bitch. You know what I mean? That was just the way rap was in 1998. You know, you couldn't just be a middle class dude um, or a suburban cat or whatever you want to call it. Now, um, outside of that, that you're lucky, um, I would say that this allows you a lot more of opportunity to tell your story. Now, because there's a lot of non-inner city rappers, not a lot of non-gangster, gangster, gutter, gutter rappers who are really big now, that means you have more opportunity to show your diverse lifestyle. There are rappers who are not from the gutter gutter who are extremely successful rap about weed, like Wiz Khalifa. There are rappers who are not from the gutter gutter street projects who rap about politics and knowledge and, and fashion, Kanye West. There are rappers who are not from the gutter gutter streets who are white, Mac Miller. Like they're like even, you know, Eminem, if just to use a perfect example, Eminem is really from like the st streets. Like he is actually like from Detroit. So even in the 90s, even being white, you had to be like has some street credentials. Anyway, point is you as a suburban rapper, you can now um, tell your story and you have a much better chance of getting heard. Uh, so in that way, I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to pass too much judgment about what's right, what's wrong. But if you could take anything away from this video, non-inner city rappers, um, you know, number one, know your history a little bit, understand how things have changed so you know how to fit all of this in. And even when, when Kanye was first blowing up, if you notice his music had to be a little bit more like gangster to, to make that transition. And in that way, that guy was extremely intelligent for that one to know how to mix the Rockefeller Street stuff and move into like 808s and Heartbreak. And then after that, you have like Drake and people like that. So know how to mix mix it, know your history, know how to bring it together 
And like I said, if you're a non-inner city rapper, if you're not from the streets, from the hood projects, whatever, the one takeaway is you were born at the right time. Congratulations. It's like me, like congratulations to me. I can talk about rap on a channel and people love it. I love y'all. And I can rep UCLA at the same time. And it's not like a weird non-rap thing. There's 97. Every rap fan would be like, who the fuck is this bitch ass motherfucker talking about rap? Are you fucking student? You kidding me? Fuck out of here. <laughs> but now, you know, it's all good. So hopefully this makes sense. I'll probably make a video about uh, gangsta MCs as well. Because I don't want y'all to think that um, this is some kind of like rah-rah speech for the suburban non-city rappers. Um, if, if anything, there's a lot of suburban non-city rappers that I do think are kind of like soft. And it kind of annoys me when like everyone just takes them on board and I'm like, well, rap, you're still supposed to man up a little bit. You know what I mean? So look for that. Um, last thing I'll say, if you enjoy, and this is your first time watching me, subscribe. Hear me talk, I usually talk more technical rap knowledge, but here we are today responding to Matt J, shout. And uh, sign up for our newsletter right below the description box. More free shit, more analysis. You know what I'm saying? Not very street, suburban to have a newsletter. So put two and two together. Makes a burger, makes a sandwich. All right, I'm out. Peace. <laughs>